Hello and welcome to A World in London, your definitive independent global music show. I'm DJ Rithu. Over the next few weeks, we have a special series for you that tells the story of a brand new, exciting classical music project. The Lim Fantasy of Companionship for Piano and Orchestra, involving a talented global team of composers, musicians, pianist Ted Joselson and the London Symphony Orchestra, who've found a way to connect technology with humanity, addressing the problem of loneliness in an aging population by using robots as companions for humans in the future. This thoroughly futuristic project encompasses recordings, live events and animation with an inanimate called Alan as the central character. Who better to give us an overview of the project than its Singaporean co-creator, pioneering robot embracing, former surgeon, Dr. Susan Lim. Susan, tell me where the story of the Lim fantasy of companionship for piano and orchestra began exactly. Oh, it began in, um, I'll have to say it began in 2017 in the mountains of Courchevel, where I met Manu Matin and Matthew Amad for the first time. And uh, we had recorded a song with the famous Joy Barua, and uh, he composed the most brilliant Alan song, which became the theme song. And I took it to Matt and I said, would you sing it so that I could hear how it sounded? And we were in a, in a little chalet with a bar. He sang it because he is a singer. And I thought, yeah, it sounds okay. And then uh, I turned to my husband and said, I have a birthday wish. And could we record this at Abbey Road Studios? And uh, he said, what's Abbey Road? Because <laughs> my husband is not, was not, was not into music then. He, he definitely is now. Uh, he did his research, the long and short, as we got to Abbey Road. And we got all together, Joy, Matt, um, Manu and all of us and record, re recorded a series of songs. And then I thought, why not string all these songs together to tell a story? And, and then, of course, I met Ted Josephson, who lives in Singapore. And he is a classical pianist and a concert pianist. And he said, Susan, why don't you think of creating an orchestral piece stringing together all of your songs to tell a story. And I thought, brilliant. And that's how it started. Well, it sounds as though the story began in an idyllic location, an almost fairy tale uh, yes. a, a story of how various people met, uh, professional musicians, composers, um, your husband not quite being on the same page at that point, Deepak. <laughs> um, and, and then this wish to go to Abbey Road Studios. But was the story actually brewing before then? kind of a plushies to piano? Yes, it was. Because um, in 2016, I started writing, doodling on the weekends because I was still working full time as a surgeon. So I only had the weekends to doodle and I would write about uh, a story about companionship. And I was driven to that story because my partner in the operating room was a robot and it was an inanimate. And I felt that this partnership of human and inanimate uh, would, would be an answer to the loneliness that had started to creep up in society and which now has become pretty much a pandemic. Um, and so I thought, let me try and tell a story uh, through the use of a plush companion about 
the value of artificial intelligence, not in a metal-like robot, but in a cuddly plush inanimate, so that the public at large might see the softer, more friendly side to the whole concept. And, you know, I, I thought, why write a book when we can write lyrics? And uh, why not have the lyrics sung and play this music? Because then music would permeate into every corner of the earth and uh, hopefully reach the masses. As you've mentioned, your career background is as a distinguished transplant surgeon, stem cell pioneer, researcher, you know, it's all been in the field of medicine. But how did that or could that really overlap with music? Why was that your first go to option? I've always loved music. And I feel that the performing arts today is really a very good platform to introduce science to the masses because science today plays such a, a critical role in taking humanity and us humankind into, into the next journey because you're hearing about artificial intelligence, you're hearing about synthetic life, regenerative medicine, longevity, and uh, I, I felt that the communication of the science to the public was very important. And I felt because of my love for music all through the years, that perhaps I might be in a, a good position to try and communicate some of my thoughts about the new sciences through music. There's an incredible amount of prophecy involved in what you're saying and what actually happened. I think you were way ahead of your time. You you worked out that there was going to be even more loneliness in the world yeah. than we could have ever imagined at back mm. in 2016. We didn't really know a global pandemic was on its way. And such a vast number of people worldwide experienced the worst loneliness of their lives over That's the right. last few years. We didn't perhaps realise uh, just what importance artificial intelligence would begin to play in our lives at that point as well. And now yes. it's something that's being talked about all the time. Uh, in oh. fact, the, the threat of AI, perhaps, uh, you know, in terms of cyber attacks or wars, people here in the news are even talking about it, um, curtailing humankind, you know, uh, and, and the human race, really but you saw it as a force for good. Yes, I did. And certainly through my profession, because today we have robotic nurses. You know, when I was a medical student, I worked in a nursing home to sort of pay my way through med school. And so I used to work weekends lifting patients and it was an old age home. And But today we have uh, robotic companions who can do the manual labor and who can also provide companionship. And with language abilities now, I, I think it's it's a, it's a good thing. Um, so I want to champion artificial intelligence. Of course, I'm not saying that there is not a bad side to it, but you know, whatever good there is, I want to put it out into the world. Absolutely. And most specifically, the role of robots, inanimates, yes. um, yes. to alleviate loneliness and provide companionship. Yes. 
and, and also um for for people today who may not have a companion i think it still is very important to be able to express empathy and to express love and whether it's love to an inanimate companion to a pet doesn't necessarily have to be a human so long as there's something for the person to 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 you know express his or her feelings then i think it's a good thing because today in many parts of the world there just aren't enough compa human companions to go around so we really have to augment human companionship with pets and with inanimates and inanimates enabled through artificial intelligence is one way to go Susan, perhaps one of the greatest expressions of your love for humanity, um, just, you know, for other people that you've never even met before, has been expressed through music, uh, through the creation of this project, um, the limb fantasy, and all of its many permutations. How does that make you feel? It, it makes me feel... Um, I, I feel a sense of, sense of warmth whenever someone asks me about the music or listens to the music, or even when I'm writing it or thinking about it. There is this sense of inner warmth, and uh, it's, it's hard to describe. It's not tangible, uh, but it's what pushes me on. It's what sustains the project. And uh, I, I kind of feel that the warmth radiates to to all of the team members because when we get together we don't say so much but we do have we do share the same feelings there are a lot of sing sing-alongs and sing songs that i've noticed <laughs> uh, as the team the limb fantasy it's very, team it's it's very important i mean we started as a small team and of course i mean we have grown but it's important that to me at least that we don't forget the pioneering group and so I try to be to always reach out. For example, we had a, a stage reading uh, in the UCLA in uh, 2019 April in uh, Los Angeles, and the students there did their bit to articulate Alan as a musical. And you know, I always do reach out for them. I I try to be inclusive. And, uh, and likewise, as we move on, uh, certainly the alumni, the Allen alumni is growing. Joy Barua has a wonderful term for it. He calls it the Ark of Allen. I love that term. That's perfect. Yeah. He is very articulate. Let's just clarify who the, who the different characters are. Firstly, yes. with regard to Allen, Allen is the main inanimate. It is. Who, Alan who, is the inanimate, um, and Alan is a, is a plush companion. It started off as a toy on a factory belt in Tanzania and then acquired a soul from a little baby lion that was shot in the jungles of Tanzania. And the soul entered the cotton body suit of the plush inanimate just as it was being stitched up. And so you have this belt of plush inanimates and then you have Alan with the soul. And that's how Alan from day one was different. I mean, it didn't yet have artificial intelligence. It didn't yet acquire synthetic biology or robotics, uh, but it did have a soul and therefore it did have empathy. Over here, we would refer to a plushie or a plush toy as a cuddly toy. Uh, yeah, a cuddly. 
Yes. A cuddly toy. Um, cuddly. Yeah. Alan's and, a, bit, a bit worn out now, and it's really badly in need of synthetic biology, but it is very cuddly, yes. So when you first enrolled or engaged some of the musicians and composers into this project, uh, Manu Martin, Joy yes. Barua, Mathieu, um, Ted Rome. Josselson, J yes. Jerome on guitar, were they eager to jump in to yeah. a fantasy, a musical fantasy or a musical f full stop about a cuddly toy called Alan? Yes. You know, um, nobody batted an eyelid. I was all prepared to defend uh, what I felt some people might think was a, ch a childish idea, but really nobody batted an eyelid. Uh, and uh, I, I was really happy about that. Listening to great music from the limb fantasy of companionship for piano and orchestra as part of our special series about the project on a world in London. I'm DJ Rithu and today I'm talking with the project co-creator, Dr. Susan Lim. And one of the greatest creative partnerships that you've established through the limb fantasy of companionship for piano and orchestra is with your daughter, one of your daughters, Christina Teens Tan. That's right. Um, to, to, to be quite honest, uh, she provides a lot of the material for the story because the story is, is based on a true life story. And uh, Christina in having grown up before my eyes as a medical student and who had taken a, a plush, a plushy or cuddly to college gave me a lot of uh, uh, ideas for writing this story. And uh, quite naturally, she became my co-creator. And she in herself is very creative. She loves writing lyrics and she provides, I guess, the, the youthful component to, to, you know, the songs that I write, which perhaps may be a little bit more profound. I write the songs about synthetic DNA, new world order, robotics, teleportation. And she would write off to college, life on the shelf, that kind of thing. So I, I, we formed a really good partnership. One of the things that struck me about the limb fantasy is um, actually just how talented you and Christina are as lyricists. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we didn't realize it ourselves, but essentially I guess it was just telling a story um, through words. And that's how we started. Uh, the limb fantasy started with words that form lyrics that got composed into songs, strung into an orchestral piece. And voila, that's how it started. And then, of course, then it inspired animation um, to tell a, a story through visuals. So you're right, we do have many components to the project. But I think uh, perhaps one of the strengths is not just that the two of you are incredibly articulate, incredibly eloquent uh, as writers, as speakers as well. Um, but perhaps that 
you both write from the heart? Yes, we do. And I, I think the reason behind that is because in in both of our professions, um, we are very constrained. I, I, I was an academic uh, surgeon and professor. And uh, in writing medical literature, you're very constrained uh, not to stray beyond the boundaries of what is absolute fact. And so there was then this desire to really write from the heart and, you know, go off tangent when we were doing something as as passionate as uh, as a story about an inanimate. So yes, we did write from the heart and with gusto too. <laughs> Susan, you've given us an indication of um, the very genuine feelings and passion that goes into uh, the lyrics that you and teens, Christina Teens Tan, have written for the songs that were in the Alan fantasy, the musical. Um, Was it easy to to get the musicians to reflect that in the instrumentation because you know sometimes as creators we have we have a vision of what we want something to sound like and it doesn't always go in that direction yes so uh that's a really good question i'll have to say that um we have three composers three key composers um and manu as the overall orchestrator and composer. But the three uh, composers of songs, for example, I'll start with Joy because he launched our theme song, the Allen song. Joy Barua, who sits in uh, Mumbai in India, uh, could very well be sitting with me here in Singapore because, uh, you know, communicating with him is so direct, it's so warm, it's so, it's so, um, I feel that he understands me and he spends a lot of time. He dives into the song. He wants to know the history behind the lyrics. He does his research as if it were some kind of a project, scientific project. And then he comes back. And like, for example, I gave him the song Synthetic DNA and he had to go and read all about synthetic biology. And I remember he's him saying to me that his neighbor was laughing when he was singing uh, synthetic DNA, A, T, G, C. And the neighbor was shouting at him and saying, but why just those alphabets? Don't you know any others? And so it was really, it was really fun. And so for Joy, he really did uh, engage in a deep manner with the, the lyrics 
in terms of telling story through the music. Ron and teens worked together so well because they were both in college. So they spoke college lingo. So Christina's lyrics were given to her partner, Ron, also a college student. And so they communicated that way. With Matt, Matt is a bit of a romanticist. I feel he belongs to the romantic era. He's French and uh, he composes some of the most beautiful pieces, very sweeping, very uh, deep, um, very fun. He loves uh, to dabble in horns and he's a guitarist. And uh, he does try because he is French. So we spend a lot of time telling, uh, speaking to each other about the intent of the song, but he gets it because, you know, Matt is the first person I met and he is Alan. Uh, the first time I met him and I heard his voice, I thought to myself, this is Alan because he's a bit childlike in his voice, though he is a man. And, uh, and so I think he does understand the role that he plays in composing the songs. Manu is different altogether. He, you don't need to speak too much to Manu. We are on the same wavelength. Uh, it is the most beautiful relationship that I could have ever asked for to have a composer like a Manu who really understands we spend a lot of time speaking because he's from the musical world and me originally from the science and medical world but um i think we share we share and we, we try to understand each other and uh, he does the most brilliant job he's a marvelous composer what strikes me about the cast that you've described already, uh, Manu Martin, uh, Mathieu, Emad, uh, Joy Barua, Ron Danziger, and of course, Christina Teens Tan. Um, and then we haven't mentioned yet in this little question and answer section, uh, you know, Ted Joselson, the pianist, is that, you know, it's a truly international group of people. And yes. Not only did everybody need to kind of get on the same page beyond yes. language, beyond borders, beyond different cultures, but also, to be frank, when we're looking at such world class, uh, world class professionals, they've all got to get on the same page and also put aside their egos. It's that's not an easy thing. No. And, you know, we never thought about it. As we got together in Abbey Road, we, we never for a moment thought that we came from diverse cultures that didn't hit us until, of course, we sat down for a meal together. And then there were some of us that just couldn't eat curries and <laughs> others that wanted a chili margarita. And it was just such a riot. But, yeah, I mean, it's wonderful how we are a melting pot. And that's the other thing I'm very proud of, the fantasy, is that it, it brings together people of diverse backgrounds, uh, harmoniously working together to, to send out a message of companionship. And uh, to me, that's very special. Also special were, of course, those recordings at Abbey Road Studios, the the home of the Beatles recordings. Um, you know, the the your wish, your your wish on a star for where you wanted all of this to go uh, in terms of getting everything put down on CD. And um, and of course, I was lucky enough to be at one of those recordings, and it was the post lockdown recording. Um, right. And I thought it was, you know, special just because of that reason, because we'd all been deprived and starved of real music and, you know, being amongst real musicians. And to sit there in the gallery with Joy Barua, um, observing and listening, you know, the, to the London Symphony Orchestra 
and your leading players, your leading musicians. Um, it was just, I, I, it was the wow factor was just off the roof. Yeah, I mean, um, Ab Abbey Road, going to Abbey Road is like a mecca for all of us, for musicians. And, you know, as a, when we can look back a, as students, it w was a dream to even possess a, an LP with the words recorded in Abbey Road. I mean, even that was a big thing. Uh, but now to have been able to record at Abbey Road and post lockdown post covid it was something really special because my uh when i went into the canteen uh to get a drink the canteen operator had said to me what a wonderful thing that you are because we were one of the first groups to come back in that you have brought life back in and that they hadn't seen the london voices for so long and uh, you know now suddenly we were all together again and that feeling of togetherness it was just amazing. You're listening to A World in London, global music show and our special series about the limb fantasy of companionship for piano and orchestra. I'm DJ Rithu, today in conversation with the project co-creator, Dr. Susan Lim. I think your fascination and respect for musicians shines through all the time but when I saw that firsthand in Abbey Road Studios in Studio One you know there we are in this huge huge recording chamber uh, with the orchestra with the pianist conductor and so on and you were just transfixed you were sitting there next to the pianist all day all the way through the recordings and like you you were kind of glued to to their presence you know to to their talent it was amazing to, to, to see you to see you do that actually they are such talented people uh two things really struck me one was pertaining to to my own skill as a surgeon, I realized that, you know, the precision and execution for the musicians, uh, really, um, really, I could really understand that because in my profession, it was very important. And here then I was seeing that the, that the most important note struck or, you know, the, how they would, they would float up on the keyboard. Just that precision was so important in creating the sound. And the other thing then that I noticed was that here I was saying that it's a relationship of human and inanimate, me and the, and the robot in the operating room. But suddenly before my eyes, I see that every single musician is interacting with an inanimate, 
with his or her instrument and through that relationship, creating a sound and creating a message to send to the world. And I thought, this is such a lovely concept that here I was in a room of musicians and their inanimate companions and what long hours they would have spent with their companions in creating a message that they would like to communicate through sounds, through notes, through music. And so I could really relate to them. I was mesmerized. <laughs> to ask you Susan I mean have you actually taken up piano lessons yourself at any point because <laughs> I, I, I did I, I did when I was a, a very young girl my grandmother like all grandmothers thought that I should learn the piano but in truth I was a tomboy and so it didn't work very well with me uh, but subsequently uh, for the long hours I've sat with Ted Josephson he is very much my teacher I have a huge amount of respect for him uh, he has really um, encourage me to at least, you know, try and, and learn some music. And I have been inspired, yes. But the, the problem right now is to find a bit of time. Is the, is, is the piano your absolute favourite? Say in terms of second best, in terms of the different sections of orchestra? Well, I would say the harmonica. Because... It, it, it looks wonderful. You could put it in your pocket. You can move around and you can create the most amazing song. And I'll say that also because we had a, a wonderful harmonic player who came and recorded at Abbey Road Studios uh, for one of our songs, Print of Purple Lavi. And uh, you, you will get to hear it. Uh, but he really inspired me. I was going to ask you if you were a secret Stevie Wonder fan as well. but Yeah, I am. <laughs>
fantastic, beautifully packaged CD off the Limb Fantasy of Companionship for Piano and Orchestra, i.e. the orchestral, the instrumental version recorded at Abbey Road Studios. That CD and its accompanying projects, the animation, for example, have been winning awards everywhere. Is there no end to all the awards that are going to be won by the Limb Fantasy? Um, it's it's a lot of hard work. And honestly, I mean, it, we have such a huge team. And uh, here for the awards, I really have to say that we have amazing uh, animation uh, in, in, in Samudra Kaj. Jal Saikya from Assam in India, and uh, he has created a wonderful series of animations for us then to mount our, our soundtrack. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a way of communicating the story, because I feel that when we enter the film festivals, uh, we get to reach uh, the public who may not necessarily just want to listen to audio, but who may be interested in the visual content. And whichever way it's possible, I would like the story to 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 get out. And uh, on that note, what we're looking to do next is to combine an orchestral performance uh, with animation to have uh, a cine concert. And uh, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to to perhaps launching that in the coming year. You do think of everything. Um, <laughs> not everybody who produces an audio CD has even vaguely thought about the visual side of things, how to enhance that project, how to reach yeah. a wider audience, uh, new audiences in other mm -hmm. ways. But yeah. it, it sounds as though you, you really, really have all bases covered in that sense. Yes. I mean, it's a multimedia yeah. approach, right? Yes, that's right. And also uh, what we're looking at um, doing is to launch our NFT. And uh, what and so the sound, the audio that we will record from uh, the premiere uh, may one day be launched on an NFT so that it becomes widely available in the digital world. So, you know, it's not that then necessary to buy a f physical CD, but you could get it digitally. And so I'm, I'm looking into that too. Uh, just in terms of content, content, I wanted to also ask you about the classical rock or rock classical sound of some of the works on the CD. The rock classic sound that is apparent yes. in the Limb Fantasy soundtrack, is that something you were wanting to create and delve into in the first Very place much more. it was so necessary only from the view the point of view of telling the story because the story shows that the inanimate transitions into something that now has synthetic dna has artificial intelligence and robotics and that transition into a new world order needed rock music to come in to communicate that transition. So yes, and if you if if uh, if you listen to the whole fantasy, you will find the rock music comes in right smack in the middle in Act Four uh, with New World Order, and then again it it comes in teleportation when there is quantum entanglement of two souls into one in teleportation. Now, this is a highly unusual thing. It's it's not the done thing to have an electric guitar <laughs> yes, no. plonked into the midst yes. of a classical music orchestra. It's it's not. And, and I guess, uh, you know, I mean, it's, uh, it's a genre of music that is perhaps with the times that are obviously we're not classical we're more uh, music for film and uh, I, I like I like to think that of course we have the the backbone of the orchestra but that we include all other forms of instrumentation and all other genres of music if we can tell the story better if the communication is better and more with the times and and could reach a wider audience, then yes, I think that's what we would do and that's what we've done.
You're listening to A World in London Global Music Show and our special series about the limb fantasy of companionship for piano and orchestra. I'm DJ Rithu and I asked the project co-creator Dr. Susan Lim, what's next? What I want to do next is to have a, a projection of animation so that because if you listen to the fact to see you do get an idea that it is trying to tell a story because the music changes there uh, is a different genre that comes in you get to hear the sound of the taikos that communicate the jungle and then what's this electric guitar so there is a story that's coming through and i feel that if we can have some visuals in the form of silent animation that runs at the back um, that might be quite interesting. So that's my idea of a, of a cine concert, a live orchestra playing to the animation. It sounds more than interesting, uh, <laughs> interesting and beyond. <laughs> what about quantum entanglement? There's a bit of a buzz around this at the moment because of the Nobel Prize winners. Yeah. Could you actually tell us exactly what quantum entanglement is? Yes. In my story, I'll start with the fictional version. So in the story of Alan, Alan craves immortality and more than anything else, wants to be the companion of Christina forever because it sees that Christina is growing and blossoming into a young woman, has a boyfriend, and will it get left on the shelf? So it craves for its soul to be entangled with that of Christina forever. And in the storyline that I've created, I've wanted very much to try and stick to as, to as close to the facts as possible. So the entanglement is one of communication. It's not a physical entanglement because they are two separate entities, but it's communication. So if Christina is saying something and she's a thousand miles away, Alan is hearing it in its heart, in its soul. And likewise, Alan can say something and Christina is hearing it. And so the actual science of quantum entanglement says that two particles, very small ones, photons, however far they are separated, can share similar properties such that whatever happens to one particle happens to the other particle. And I think that if you then take it spiritually, it's quite beautiful. Uh, a lot of times, you know, if you have a loved one and you're separated by a thousand miles because of COVID. Yet, I think there is, there are many of us who feel that so little needs to be done, but whatever we say in our heart gets felt by the other person miles and miles away. And in a sense, we are entangled. That is the fictional version that we are trying to put through in the story. go next with this project um, we, we, we would love to um we would love for 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 the fantasy to premiere in different countries in india and in europe and the us Wh wherever we can you know reach we would love to spread the word um so that's 
that's that's what I'd like to do next. And not just with the orchestra, but we might then mix with some songs as well. So to tell the story, we might then have a soundtrack that includes one or two singers. We might have a narrator on stage. We might have animation floating at the back and the orchestra playing. And so there's a lot of, as you said, there's a lot of permutations and combinations. Um, and what better way to tell a story? Because you can then appeal to different subsets of, uh, of the population, different audiences. And not to forget the kids. Well, who can forget speaking with trailblazing surgeon and visionary Dr. Susan Lim, who has boldly gone where no man has gone before. The CD we've been talking about is out on Signum Classics. But wouldn't it be amazing if the Lim Fantasy team could teleport themselves over here for some music magic? Well, guess what? Their UK concert premiere is about to happen on July the 5th. I'll see you there at Cadogan Hall, London. For this amazing science meets sound orchestral delight. And let's speak next week for another episode of our special series about the limb fantasy of companionship for piano and orchestra. I'm DJ Rithu, wishing you safe and well, and thanking you for listening to A World in London. Trapped in my stuffed form My torso wilted by the air Waiting for a brainstorm some small miracle conjured in the air to get me there The science has been done Two objects merged in an instance Share the same existence Emotions felt in one are mirrored in the other. New lives begun. Teleportation, yeah. Just by accident, shared existence. It's my resurrection. Fortune scrambled in souls and tangled the air. Oh, please. It's a brand new me Escaped in a new form Souls entangled in the air Scientists had a brainstorm Quantum physics, they cracked the code And made us as a pair Strange phenomenon Look into his eyes, the twinkle, I see me Can the incredible be true? Of me and Christina, our lives are not one
Oh, please, please let it be Cause someone, someone's made a brand new me